Keep the ball in the kitchen, you guys. In the kitchen. Oh, hang on a second, ladies. I wanna I wanna correct you. So when we're doing diagonal dinking, you want to bounce your ball in front of my right foot, and you're you're left-handed, right? So I'm gonna be bound well, whether you're right or left, we're going diagonal, you're gonna be hitting backhands, I'll be hitting forehands. We're not going from corner of the box to corner of the box. We're going from in front of my foot to in front of your foot. So I'm trying to bounce it in front of your foot, right? And you're trying to bounce it in front of my foot, and then I'm trying to bounce it in front of your foot. Here we are. That's what, so we want to create diagonal dinking without having to move and without separating, okay? And the same thing when we get to the figure eight on the crosses, we're hitting to the same spot. So Tim, you want to be in the center of your box, buddy. Right in the center of your box, buddy. Do you want to be in the center of your box? One foot on either side of the white line. Exactly. Same with Ann. <clears throat> so this is all about control, not about power, right? You need to warm up. Okay. Oh, okay. Christine and I'm gonna like to warm up over here. Do you guys need a ball? Do you ladies need a ball? Let me get you one. I'll get you one. There you go. Yeah, um, so ideally, when we're cross-court dinking, again, this is a control, structured warm-up is all about control, right? So I want to I want to pass the ball to her so it lands in a nice, comfortable spot for her to dink, right? So I don't want to be hitting all the way out to the sideline. I just want to be doing a nice pass back and forth in a spot where she can comfortably dink back to me, right? So it's not a contest, right? All right, let's switch to the other lawn, and then uh, we're going to start our drill. Let's talk about structured dinking. Give me a second. I'll bring the other ladies over. Come on over. 
Uh, come on over and let's have a talk. Okay, so today is our first first in a four-week cycle, uh, Fundamentals. Uh, we're going to start with dinking today. We're going to be working on dinking specifically. So, for four weeks in June, we worked on dinking. For four weeks in July, we worked on or not dinking. For four weeks in June, we worked on Fundamentals. Four weeks in July, we worked on Fundamentals. Now we're going to work four weeks on Fundamentals in August. If you've been here for all three, June, July, and August, each time we go through fundamentals, you're getting a different thing to work on. I'm working on your next thing. So when I met you back in June, I had you working on something. Hopefully you've corrected that by now. We moved on to something else in July, and now hopefully, if not, that's okay. Then we're going to work on the same thing again. And that's just the way it is, right? Fundamentals are fundamentals. You have to become good at the fundamentals before you can start to layer the intermediate and advanced stuff on top of it. Um, I've been playing for 18 years. I'm constantly working on my fundamentals. We worked on our fundamentals this morning for 40 minutes before uh, you guys got here. So fundamentals is not something you ever stop working on. You're always looking to tweak your fundamentals and, and bring them up to whatever the current standard is. Okay? So I want to talk just for a minute about the structured dink and the purpose for the structured dink. I'm going to get Angela here to structure. We're just going to go between in the V between us. Okay. This is not a contest. I'm literally trying to control the ball and land it about two-thirds of the way through the kitchen to her. All right? So, this is the first one. And then we move on to other elements of the structured dink. The structured dink is all about control. How do you win a dink battle when you get into a game? Not by hitting hard. Not by hitting soft. Not by spin. It's about control. And control means you have to be able to hit soft and hard at the right times to a specific target, maybe with a specific spin. That all starts with the fundamental control of having a nice, nice smooth, warm-up dink. If you can master the structured dink, you're going to start to win more dinking battles because you're going to be able to hit soft as well as hard. So if I have Angela out here, I'm going to move her out here, and I hit her a soft one that brings her in, my next one can be hard, right? So I need the soft to make the hard work. Sorry. Sorry, I, I had to do that. That was just for illustration. Okay. Right. So you need, people think, oh, I get out wide. I just need to dink out wide, hard, and I'm going to win. No, if you hit the same speed all the time, you're not going to win. The person who can hit two speeds is probably going to win, right? So you need to have the soft to complement your hard. You need to have the soft to set up your hard. Sometimes you need the hard to set up your soft. You need both of those. In structured warm-up, we're working on the soft stuff. We're working on very precise placement. So when I, when I say we want to do these dinks from knee to knee, our angle dinks from knee to knee, that's what I mean. I don't want you pushing your partner back. I don't want you pushing your partner out of their box. I don't want you to even make your partner move. You're working on putting it in the perfect spot that you want to put it to. And every one of our little structured dink activities has the same goal. Learn to put it in that spot, to control it with the angle and the speed and the, and the racket touch. Do you have a question? And? No, sorry. You had a face that I thought maybe you had a question. Okay. All right. So I go soft to pull her over here, and then I hit all. <laughs> Didn't work. All right. So we're we're going to work on our we're going to work on our fundamentals today. Just let me briefly go over them. Thinking fundamentals. So we want to stay open. This is the part that Angela is really going to be working on today. For example, she's going to be working on staying open to the net, moving with a shuffle step across. Right. Angela's habit right now is to turn while her partner's getting the ball. So what we're going to work on is the dinker is going to be doing one thing and their partner's going to be doing something similar. We're going to work on that specifically, keeping an open stance. The racket is laid back out in front of us. So if it's to my side, my racket head's going to be this way or this way. If in the center, my racket head's going to be down. But my wrist is laid back, right? Which means there's always a divot in my wrist. It's never like this. It's always... Whatever paddle, whatever position my paddle is in, there's always a divot in this wrist, right? So you want to take it out front, okay? So open stance, wrist laid back, and then 
little or no backswing. So that's the term that pickleball Canada uses, little or no backswing. I like I prefer the term minimal backswing. So there is going to be some backswings. Everybody know what a backswing is? It's when you bring your racket back before you move it forward. Okay? So minimal backswing means there's going to be some backswing, but it's the least amount necessary. Right? So if I'm thinking with Angle, you get a ball. There's a little bit of backswing as, I'm com as it's coming in, but no more than is necessary, right? If it gets behind me, oops, I might have to hit a little more backswing, but now I'm in trouble of hitting it too hard, right? So that's all we're doing, okay? So we're working on control today. We're working on our fundamentals. I'm going to be coming around to each of you and pulling you off and taking you over and I'm going to be taking pairs over to work on that court. I'm going to leave three people over here to work with Angela and I'll do all of the fundamentals corrections. Actually, let's do the four over there and the fundamentals corrections over here. Okay with that? So take those four people. You four can go over to the other court and you can stay here with me. You guys can stay here with me. I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you dinking with each other. We're going to work on the structured dink. And we're going to work on our fundamentals. Okay, so go ahead and start. Okay, pause for one second. Okay, pause, that's okay. So Tim, you're consistently pushing the ball to the back of her box. Is that friendly? No, a better spot would be about two-thirds of the way, right? So. That's the thing I want you to work on controlling is the, is the depth of your push. Right now you're pushing a lot because you're taking too big of a swing. So if you swing a little bit less and just lift a little bit more, you're going to be able to put that ball in a friendlier spot for her. Okay? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, pause for a second. Now, Margaret, I'm going to work, give you something specific to work on. You're doing something that a lot of ladies do. You're lifting with every dink or you're moving with every dink. What I'd like you to do is get in position and minimal movement. Mostly use your racket and your arm. You're not pushing that ball very far. So if you're constantly moving, you're not going to be able to control the speed of your dink. Right? So get down into position. And try to use mostly your arm. I'm not saying no movement, but minimal movement, okay? Nice feeds, Tim. Holy cow, look at that. Great feeds, Tim. Pause for one second. We're doing great. Pause, 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 pause. The one thing that I'm seeing that concerns me a little bit is both of you have a little bit of a hunchback in your wrist. I really want you on those wrists when you're taking on your backhand. I want you to create that divot. Look at your wrist and make sure you have a little bit of a divot there. Pause, pause for a second, Margaret. Margaret, pause for a second. Yep. So let me show you your contact point. All right. So up front. Oops. So you need to push your elbow out a little more. Oh, sorry. So turn your, no, I did that wrong. There you go. There you go. So let's close your racket off. There we are. So you see the, the divot here? Yep. Right? So we want to reach a little bit. Yep. Right? And it's not, you're, you're moving from the shoulder, not from your elbow. So you're not doing this, you're doing this. So push. So th think of it as a pendulum this way. No, look at me. Towards me. Push the ball towards me. That's the motion, right, from the shoulder, right? So we're going from the shoulder. So let me just demonstrate with Tim, get you to step right here. So step in here so you can see me. Watch my shoulder joint. You see the difference? So my elbow is staying fairly quiet, my wrist is staying fairly quiet, the motion is coming from my shoulder joint. You see that? So I, my elbow is not bent like this. My arm is straight. 
touch. So you're pushing. It's like you're pushing it. You're pushing it away from you. Like this. Yeah, there you go. Okay, think about that. Try that. You're great. Good work. Nice control, buddy. Gay and Ann, come with me. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I got to get you guys doing something. We've just been taking but yeah. I do. I want one ball, four people, yeah. right? And I want everybody moving so that they're moving. When they move with their partner, they're moving sideways. So, so you know the drill. Like yes, exactly like that. Yeah. Preferably like this. So you, you can explain the drill. Yeah, that'll work too. Okay, Tim and Margaret, I'm going to slide you over to the other side. You guys are going to go play a game with Angela. Right? And you're going to work on adopting this movement in the game that she's going to have you play on. Okay? All right, ladies, let me see you dig. You make such a beautiful sound on your forehand dink. It's the perfect sound. Yeah. The backhand is not Sucks. the same sound. Yeah. It doesn't suck. It's it's almost as good. I think if you just relax your grip, like on your forehand, oh. your grip is very relaxed. On your backhand, I think if you relax your grip, you're going to get that same sound. So I really want you to listen for that sound. That tells you... That was better. I see it. I see why that's happening. Hang on one second. Okay. Stop. All right. So on your forehand, when you hit the ball over the net, it's spinning. Top spin. Okay. On the backhand, it's going the opposite way. Is it? Yeah. You know why? No. Because on the top, when you're, when you're on your forehand, you're lifting up on the ball. Uh -huh. So it's kind of rolling off your paddle. Like but on the backhand, you're pushing down towards the ground which is causing it to slice. Okay. So if you get your backhand down below the ball like you are on your forehand, okay. right, get your so instead of instead of perpendicular or parallel to the ground, get your paddle head down a little bit. So on your forehand your paddle head is down. Yes. On your backhand your paddle head can be down too and you can still take it out front and lift. That way you're not getting that underspin. So, you yeah, for some reason on your backhand, you seem to think that the paddle needs to be perpendicular to the ground. Yeah. Right? So just take it a little further out front and you'll be able to have the paddle head down a little bit. A little further out front. So give her some backhands, okay? That, that was a little bit underspin. You see the underspin? See the underspin? Okay. Well, you got something to work on now. You'll you'll work your way through it. It's a much better sound, though. 
That didn't have underspin on it. You're getting it. Your dinking has improved so much, Gay, in a month. It's astonishing. I mean, your your output was always good, but your technique has improved so much, right? You you even though you had, even though your 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 uh, your technique wasn't by the book, you were still getting really good results. But what I've seen in the last month is your technique has improved. Now for this control drill, you guys should be aiming for about two-thirds of the way. The distance should be about two-thirds of the way from the net to the, the blue line. So don't try not to push your partner back too much for this. This is just a control. Very nice. How's it coming, Ann? Good. I'm going to give you a few minutes to work on it. Good. Look at it. No, she's left-handed. She's forehand. That's her forehand. That's your forehand. That's your forehand that side. No, forehand on that side, yep. Okay, Angela and Tim, I'm going to get you guys to come with me after this point here. Okay, good. Anne and Gay, I'm going to slide you over to the other side. And uh, they will teach you the game that they're playing. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right, actually, no, I've had Tim over here. Who haven't I had over here? Christine? Can you go switch with Christine? Yeah. I've, I didn't realize that. Christine is the person who needs to be over here. All right, Christine, here you go. I want you to dink with Angela so I can see you guys dink face to face. Friendly, controlled, structured dink, two thirds of the way. Okay, give Christine some backhand dinks. Your dinking has improved a ton, Christine. I am so impressed. Keep the racket low. Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah. You're both thinking very well. So just. Um, I have a question. Yep. So, when it's coming this way, is it the crossover and get it, or is it a it, re it really depends. Okay, so if you're if you're working on an anchor foot and you can reach it, you want to take in one step, right? 
Um, if it's deep, sometimes you want to take a step back and turn, right? Sometimes you don't have a chance to do that. Sometimes you have to step back and take it open, right? Sometimes you need to do a quick shuffle. You need to do what you need to do, right? So sometimes your sometimes your your opponent is going to wrong foot you, or you're going to read it wrong, or it's going to tick the net, or it's going to have funny spin. You need to be able to hit all balls from all positions. Um, your default position should be to be able to step over and get it, um, but with a knee brace on, your 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 uh, Side lunges aren't going to be strong, right? So you might need to do a shuffle step or something else. That's why the cross is yeah. better for me because it's mostly on my like, glute. Yeah. 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 So everybody's body's a little bit different. People do are dealing with different kinds of injuries. People move a little bit differently. Um, I would say if you have a brace on your left knee, yeah. you don't want to be too far forward because it's really hard for you to do this, right? So if, if, you're, if, you're on, if you're trying to protect your left side, you're going to want to be a little bit back because it's going to be easier for you to step forward or straight sideways than it is for you to step back and bend that knee. So. Yeah, right. Oh, sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this is the, the strongest one is my dominant, right? I'm thankful it's not on my left, yeah. and that would be a real yeah. imbalance. So just reverse everything I just yeah. said. Yeah. All right, and we worked on stuff this morning, so we want to work on the same stuff, which is just staying open, try to get, try and get to the balls without having to turn. Yep. Depends on more. Yeah. So my preference always is. Do it without turning, right? But sometimes you can't get there. So look at how far I can go. If I'm standing here, use this red line as my marker. That's as far as I can go, right? But if I'm here, I can get all the way out to here, right? So it depends on how far you're going to need to go, right? So she always turns, yeah. Um, You can train it, right? The key, the key to taking open backhands is not to step straight sideways unless the ball's going out there. It's to step back, and oh, so, right? Yeah, so it's, it's not a, exactly, because you want to open up this space so that you have room to get your racket out, right? So if the ball's going to be landing here, you don't want to step here. You want to step back here so that you can get behind the ball. Yep. Mm -hmm. But with all that uh, that momentum, the chances of popping it up are significantly yeah, higher, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. So we're gonna um, we're gonna work on a substitution game. Uh, let me grab everybody. Well, it's only nine twenty-two. We got lots of time. Do you keep doing your drilling, and then I'm gonna get everybody set up for a substitution game. Okay, come on over, let's go over to the other side and we're gonna work on a little game here. Oh, sorry. Kitchen game.
Okay. So we're going to work on the kitchen game. The first version we're going to play is an anchor foot game. Uh, can I get to the other side to demonstrate this? Come on a little closer so you can see, guys. And the camera's set up. It should be above your heads now. So um, We're going to try to play a kitchen game uh, with only move, or with as little movement as possible. So the concept of the anchor foot is I can only move one foot. Right, so we're going to dank. She's going to try to move me. Try to move me. I will, I will pick my anchor foot depending on what you hit. So you're just going to try and move me. So, oh. So my right foot is my anchor foot here, right? Now if she puts it over this side, I might make my left foot my anchor foot. Right? Right? So I'm not moving two feet to go get the ball. I'm just moving one foot at a time. Right? You only drag if you have to reach further than you can go. Then you might have to drag. Right? So if, if I'm stepping out further than my knee, like here, then I'm going to have to drag to get my knee over my toe again. But we're going to try and do that without dragging. We're going to just try and just move one foot at a time, stay open to the net, hit your ball, return. If you have to close off, close off, hit your ball, return. So you're going to try and move one foot. When you make an error, you're going to substitute out. Okay? So Gay's going to start where she is. Anne's going to start where she is. You ladies can come here. You two can be there. Uh, no, because if... If you put it over here, if I'm standing here and, and Tim puts it right by the post, I might have to take two steps. But I have to. Right? What I'm looking for is people who are moving two feet when they don't need to move two feet. Christine, you can be over there. Is that? That'll be a fault, exactly. And Gay and Ann are going to help me police you guys. You're going to be the sub on this side. So when one of them makes a mistake, you're going to sub in on this side. You're going to be the sub on this side, okay? Ah! Yep. Okay, so two purposes to this drill. One is so you learn to return things with one step. It helps you figure out where your range is. Two, second purpose of the drill is it helps you figure out where you put the ball that's going to require the other person to move two feet. Yep, you can move one foot and then back. And then you can move the other foot and then back. But you're moving one foot at a time. So if you're going step, step, that's moving two feet. You understand what I'm saying? You get it? Okay, let me, let me show it again. Um, can we, can, there we are. It's a ball. Okay. Not right now. We're, right now we're just we're anchoring. Right? It's a friendly anchor thing. So I move my right foot, I'm back. I move my right foot, I'm back. I move, I didn't move either Well, So this time there, now I move my left foot, now I'm back. So I'm moving one foot at a time. Right? Were you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good catch, Dan. I didn't see that, so you caught it. So that's good. You know what? This is what we'll do. Tim, you come here. We're just going to do the six-person rotation. After every single point, we're going to rotate. That person's always going to serve. Yeah, we'll do our six-point rotation here. Thank you, sir. One foot. One foot. No feet. No feet. One foot. All right. So rotate. One point. Christina, you're coming to the post. There we are. Ball goes always back to that position to serve. Yep. Um, in this drill, I want you to plant and use an anchor foot. Just for this drill. Okay. If I'm, if I'm still, I can't get moving. Right? Yep.
Okay, rotate. Who feels awkward? Who feels awkward? Who feels awkward doing this? Awesome. Everybody's supposed to feel awkward initially. You're learning something new. Right. That one would have required moving two feet, right? Yeah. But you're standing still. Yeah. So if I'm moving so the first progression is learn to do it from stationary. Okay. Second progression is learn to do it with, a, with an extra step if you need it. Okay. But we're at the first progression right now. Okay. Now we're just going to go continuous rally. Well done, Margaret. Good rally. You got it? Yep. Yeah? Okay. Doesn't matter if it goes out. <laughs> It's not a game, it's a drill. Oh, two steps, but that was necessary. All right, rotate. Oh, it goes over there to Margaret. Stand on your toes. Nice job, Christine. One step. One step. Oh, Tim, nice try. You got it down to one step, though. That's looking good. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> try. Good job, Jay. Oh! Come on over here, Tim. Right over here. There we go. Oh! Right over here, Christine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Go ahead, Margaret. Right over here. Right over here. Right over here. Just slide right over here. There we are. Just so you're not in front of the camera. That's all. No worries.
the end of yeah, so that happens, right? Tim, Tim reached for it as far as he could reach, and it was beyond where he could reach, so his other foot had to come off the ground for him to make the shot, right? Yeah, and, but that, that's okay, because he's learning where the edge of his range is, right? And the more you do this, the more you get to a point where you recognize, as soon as you hear the sound, and see the ball come off the racket, oh, I'm going to have to move two steps for this one, so you can start to make your adjustment steps early. But if you're in the habit of always making two steps, you're always going to be taking a second step when one step would do. Right? So we're learning how to do it in one step. We're learning where the edge of our range is so we can recognize when we need to do two steps. Right? One, one follows the other. Yeah, yeah we're, we don't want to be taking steps. Yeah. Come on right over here, Ann. There we are. that they have when they think like this is so much better. Okay, sneaks in a few more steps. Well, she has to because she's not very big. She, she's <laughs> Come over here, Tim. Yeah. Nice, Margaret. Ah, I got out of control. Come on over here, Margaret. You're, uh, you're taking way fewer steps. That's good to see. You're not shifting your weight around so much, so that's awesome. You're not hitting the ball very far, so you don't really need much more than arm strength for working. So you don't have as much range as a taller person. So sometimes you're going to have to take two steps more than another person. But that's okay. You, you're, I mean, you've been your size your whole life, right? So you, you have strategies for managing that. Exactly. <laughs> Get comfortable with it? Yeah. All right, let's play a game now. So we're going to play a game with points. We're going to play that kitchen game. Anne will be the sub on this side. Angela will be the sub on this side. I'll get you to stand on the green lines here in front of the camera. I'm going to come over here. You're over here, Ann, with, with Gay. You're going to start on this team. You're right here. Right here, Margaret. Okay, so we have about uh, 10 minutes to play the kitchen game. You guys know how to play the kitchen game, right? Everybody knows how? Okay, go ahead. All in the kitchen. No, no, I'm not making any conditions. Hopefully, some of what we just did will stick.
I think Tim saved him. Yeah. You guys won. You guys won, so you're going to switch to the other side. Yep. One zero. One zero two. Oh, yeah, no, no, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right, you're right, you're right. Zero, zero, one. Uh-oh. Zero, zero, two. Oh, nice try. Sub out for gay. Okay, you're in. Uh, zero, zero, two, zero, zero, one. Mm -hmm. Zero, zero, one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Out. Nice try. Excellent movement, Angela. Wah, 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 wah.
Ah, oh, nice try, Margaret. Uh-oh. Oh! That was a nice shot, Angela. I was out. It was called out, right? No. It was out. No. So make make your out calls loud. Get loud, guys. Guys is. Great shot, Angela. She got you, Ann. She got you. Oh! From the winner's circle to the outhouse in two shots. He got you. He got you. Uh, today is Wednesday, you're correct. Today is yeah. We can go for a few more minutes. Are we going to continue with this or full game? I'll tell you the answer. We've only got five minutes, so we're going to finish with this. We've got six people, so I don't want to. I don't want to play full game. Boss. Huh? I said. I said bossy. Boss. We're planting really well though, so your foot movement is all good. The stuff that we're working on today is awesome. So you're gonna miss some shots, that's gonna happen.
Oh! She's like a hummingbird. She's zip right there. Four upside down, nine one. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that call was really late. Gay hit it out. Gay hit it out. Yeah. Communication. Fine, fine, fine. Oh, good reach, Ann. What a rally. Oh, yeah. That's a good shot, Margaret. All right. Okay, guys, so that was the last point. Come on in for a second. I want to talk to everybody. So today I noticed, as I always do after I teach the anchor foot lesson, that as soon as we start playing after the anchor foot lesson, everybody's planting way better than they were. If you go back and you watch the video from today, and you watch how you were moving before the anchor foot lesson and how you were moving in this final game, after the ankle foot lesson, I think you're going to see two things. The first thing I think you're going to notice is that you're set a lot sooner, that you're not, your feet just aren't moving as much. So you're, you're anchored, you're, you're, uh, your foundation is set before you hit the ball. The second thing I think you're going to notice is that you have more control in your dinking. So in the dinking game that we just played, I, I think I saw a lot more control than I saw at the beginning of the game, or at the beginning of the day. So. Yeah, so the anchor foot teaches you, teaches your brain that you can reach the ball without taking a bunch of steps, right? And if you can, if you can have a solid foundation and you can be, your feet are still while you're hitting the ball, you're always going to have more control over the ball than if you're hitting the ball while you're arriving or hitting the ball while your feet are moving, right? It adds acceleration to the math equation for your brain. And so you end up hitting the ball harder than you normally would. The other thing the anchor step teaches you is to stay a little, it causes you to stay back a little bit from the ball, right? So you're not always rushing into work, crowding the ball. You're reaching more. The ball's further away from you, so that also gives you more control. Those are my theories, anyway. That's that's the only time you're reaching control, right? Because out here, not yeah, yeah, and and still, there's a difference between a good reach and a bad reach. A good reach is anything in which your forearm and your bicep are still or on your backhand side, your tricep are still engaged, right? We never want to be reaching out into weakness, but you know, with an anchor step, you can still maintain an engaged bicep and an engaged forearm, right? And, or on tricep or on the backhand, right? So there's still a good reach and a bad reach. I think the most important thing about the anchor step lesson is, is it teaches you to be still when you're making your shots rather than moving through your shots. And you'll, you'll see it if you go back and look at the video from today. The before and after, I think you're going to see a difference in how you were thinking. Any question? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that the partner doesn't close, though, right? I mean, the partner yeah. should. Yeah. 
So there's the anchor step is a is a is a concept that we use to teach a specific thing, which is to be still when you're making contact with the ball. It has nothing to do with your partner. Today we had everybody anchored so that they could learn that foundation piece. Of course, during a game you're going to move when it's your turn to hit. That's when you're going to anchor. So yes, good question. All right, this is just a drill. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, you move with your partner. Yeah, you're going to move what's called in tandem. Right, you want to move with your partner. You don't want to both be in the center. Right, you end up both in the center. You're going to get beat a lot. So you got to stay. You got to stay spread out. You got to cover your defensive territory. So, good questions. All right, everybody. We have four minutes to pick everything up and get the heck out of here. So we need to move that curtain. We need to move the net back. Uh, and then the balls and the tubes need to go back. Not yet. Just let me move the camera first before we pull the curtain. Okay, go ahead, Anne.